hear him play all day, you know. Let us join our hearts in our opening prayer. Loving God, we come together in spirit this day as people who are diverse, but also unified as we seek to follow your will. We ask that you would open our hearts to your love, our ears to your words, and our eyes to the needs of those both far and near. Help us be the people of service and justice that you have called us to be. Make us ready to heal rather than harm, to serve rather than to be served. Give us hearts of joy and justice, for we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn is God is my shepherd.
me a figure that's correctly called a flying fish, but we all know them as fishes. And uh, when I was thinking about fishes, I'm not very good at it, but I just find fishes very interesting. So the smell of fishes, and you know what you're doing when you do it, guys, the float through the air, right? It sails off to wherever you're aiming at. And how does that go through the air? Now, I don't understand the science of it, but somehow there is a friction of air underneath that keeps it afloat. And I was thinking, that's like God's love. God's love keeps us afloat, even though we can't see that. We can't see the air underneath the friction. We can't see God's love. We can't see God. But God is there guiding us, and God will keep us afloat through our lives, just like the fishes. So think of that next time you take out your frisbee. Let us join together in prayer. Loving God, sometimes our heads are full of the noise of news headlines, of words about crises in so many places around the world that we don't even know how to turn to you. We feel overwhelmed by the hurt, the negativity and sadness, and we feel powerless. Quiet our hearts, O God, that we may hear your still small voice. Remind us again of the words of the prophet Micah, that what you require of your people is to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with you. Help us in these times of division and mistrust to focus on whatever is true, pure, and worthy in your sight. We pray that we may be witnesses to your ways of justice and kindness to all we meet, that we might bring reflections of your love to those with whom we work or talk or play. Help us not to respond to the rancor and meanness around us in like kind, but instead to turn the other cheek, to be examples of your love. We pray today for those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, and for those who have lost their way. We pray for those dear to us, for those in our circles, and for those we do not even know. We pray for our president and other leaders, for those who serve in our communities, for those who serve as police, firefighters, first responders, and in the military services. We especially pray for those suffering the effects of COVID-19. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who have been affected by the newest hurricane. And also we pray for ourselves. We pray for encouragement, for healing, and patience, and strength. Give us courage that we may serve you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God has entrusted to us the earth as our home and has blessed us with riches beyond our imaginings. Let us share a portion of our life and labor to further God's work in our community and beyond. For those worshiping with us virtually, you may give by Venmo to at First Church Stratford, by credit card or PayPal. Details are on the church website at firstchurchstratford.org. And we can also give conveniently by EFT withdrawal from our checking accounts or by the U.S. mail. Let us pray. Loving God, accept our gifts. 
which represent our hope, our faith, and our love for you and for our neighbor. May these offerings be put to wholesome and holy work in your name. Amen. Our scripture this morning is a very familiar one, uh, probably most familiar of all, and it's the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I can't think of a scripture that's more comforting than the 23rd Psalm. I can't think of a funeral that I didn't read it. Even the prophets and even a prophetic ministry calls us sometimes to offer comfort to people. In fact, the, God told the prophet Isaiah, he said, comfort, comfort my people. Speak to them tenderly and tell them that their time of hard labor is over. Comfort them by telling them there is hope. And I can't think of a time when we could use a word of comfort and a word of hope than what all of us are going through right now. And I can't think of anything that brings hope to someone than for someone to tell them a story about something that they went through that was similar or maybe the same. And they came through on the other side and were able to say afterwards, uh, I made it and you can too. God was with me even in the darkest times and you're gonna be okay. That's what the 23rd Psalm does. A story that's a testimony, not only a testimony, but a prayer, it's both. David shares how God has brought him through difficulties. And he begins by saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And as I've shared with you countless times before, whenever we read in the Hebrew scriptures that it says the Lord, uh, it is actually using the name of God, the name that God revealed on Mount Sinai when he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Actually, literally it says, I am Yahweh your God. That's the best we know how to translate that word. I am Yahweh, your God. And the reason we don't use in the Hebrew scriptures the word Yahweh is because of the third commandment in the Ten Commandments, which said, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. So in order to never profane the name of God, the Jewish people feel they should never say it. So instead of saying Yahweh, they would say uh, Adonai or El, or as we read here, the Lord, uh, for fear that they might use it too casually, and by doing that would sin against God. But I can remember so many times hearing the professor Walter Brueggemann preach on the, old, on, on the Hebrew scriptures and say something like, because of the injustice, because of the way they were treating the, the, the poor, Yahweh was mad, was angry. So uh, I, I, I'm going to use it intermittently today. Actually, it's a testimony here, as I said, that turns into a prayer. Um, David shares how God brought him through such difficulties. And he does this by trying to, um, by trying to uh, communicate to the people this mystery that he has come to trust that he calls Yahweh. And by using something that was very familiar to him. And that is by saying, the Lord 
is my shepherd. David was a shepherd who took care of his father's sheep for, for many years before being called into the military. And his experience of Yahweh as God had taken was that God had taken care of him from his youth in the same way that David had taken care of his sheep. All of Israel understood the relationship of sheep with their shepherd. As Isaiah had written, Yahweh would pick up the small sheep and tenderly hold them in his arms. Because Yahweh is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He continues, God makes me lie down, or Yahweh makes me lie down in green pastures. Yahweh leads me beside the still waters. If you would want to know anything about sheep, it's that they are very skittish and very vulnerable. In fact, and for good reason. I mean, their only defense if attacked by a predator is to run and pray that they outrun the slowest sheep so that they're not the prey. As one friend of mine said to me one time, said, if a lion is attacking us, he says, I don't have to be faster than the lion. I just have to be faster than you. And I think that's how the sheep felt. And uh, the sheep uh, were also afraid of fast running water. They would not approach, uh, uh, you know, the shore or near where it was a fast running water. So they, they would be skittish of that. So they needed to be in a place where the waters were still. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm very much like, like sheep. Uh, there is so much that frightens and worries me in this world about not just all the things that are scary, but also all the things that I need to get done. So much that isn't finished, so much that's out of my hands. But I do have those times in my life, those intermittent times of peace where I can rest where I feel that all is well. I love the wording here. He says, he makes me lie down, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, I want you to think about a time of just lying in a wonderful pasture, totally at peace. And maybe if pastures are not your thing, maybe sitting by the ocean uh, with the waves coming up, watching the water, maybe drinking a Corona, if that's your thing. And being at that place that all is well with the world. I can testify with David, there have been times in my life when looking out at the outward circumstances, there was no reason that I should be able to lie down and be at peace. But I have been able to do that. Uh, maybe it's that peace that passes all understanding. Maybe you felt that way. Maybe you feel it now. And on the other hand, maybe you don't. You don't know that you can trust the shepherd and experience peace. Maybe you don't. Uh, well, let's go on. Because even though we live in homes, we're protected from the elements outside. All of us have our own wolves and lions that creep into our thoughts at night. It might be the fear of this virus or the fear of someone you love who is vulnerable getting it. It might be the fear of many other things, possibly losing your job, the fear of, of a son or daughter in crisis or or, or for you, it might be climate change and wondering what this world is going to be like for your children. There is so much that can cause us not to be able to lie down. 
to rest. In fact, I honestly don't know how people live in the world today without the reality of this shepherd. Knowing that I can trust and knowing through this experience, through the experiences that I've had in my life, that the shepherd is trustworthy. Next, David says, he restores my soul. There's a book that was written by Philip Keller, who is a modern day shepherd and also a writer, who wrote a book called The Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. And he shared that the sheep, right before uh, the sheep, um, right before they were sheared, when they were very, very heavy with wool, would. Um, would lie down and if the, the, the wool was wet, they would be so heavy that sometimes if they laid on their side, they might end up on their backs. And if they ended up on their backs, they were unable to turn back over and to, uh, and to get up. And if they got on their backs and could not turn back over and the heat of the day, they could eventually die. From, from, heat, from a heat stroke. So, and if a, shepherd, if, if, if a shepherd was watching over them, he would notice when this would happen and the shepherd would come over and help the sheep to turn back over and help to lift the sheep up. He would restore it. That's where that word comes from. And I don't know about you, but have you ever reached a point in your life when you felt you were stuck, that you were powerless, and you wondered, how will I ever get through this or out of this, really out of this? I mean, it could be a million things going on, but there just seems to be no way out of the situation in which you have found yourself. You're kind of like that woman in that old commercial who's, who's fallen and says, I've fallen and I can't get up. And no matter what you do or what you try to try to fix things, it seems like sometimes it just gets worse or you get deeper. And you find that you are unable to restore yourself. David writes, he restores my soul. Yahweh, the Lord your God, took you by the hand and raised you up out of the muck that you had found yourself in. Maybe you already have a testimony where you can say with David that he restored, that God restored my soul. Now the, test, now the, the, the psalm turns from a, a testimony to a prayer. It moves from the third person, from he to you, from the third person to the second person. And, and bef before I explain that, let me share that Shepherds would often lead their sheep up into the mountains during the summer because the grass down on the plains would dry out and uh, there would be nothing for them to eat. So in really mountainous areas, the shepherd would lead the sheep up through uh, some, maybe some treacherous uh, uh, um, paths to get up to the higher parts of the mountain. And I don't know if any of you have ever been in some really, really big mountains. And you've walked underneath those mountains. And if you've been there most of the day, you realize that most of the time you were there, you were in a shadow. You didn't see the sun much at all. Uh, and in some places where the, the cliffs are so high on each side and by afternoon, it can seem like night. In fact, it could get so dark uh, that you can hardly see where you're going. Well, as I said before, sheep are very frightened creatures. So David writes and he says, 
even though I go through the darkest valleys, I, I'm not afraid. I don't I fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, saying you, they comfort me. Now, growing up, I thought the rod was something that maybe the shepherd punished us out of line, but a rod was a, a weapon that a shepherd had for fighting off predators. It was never used on the sheep. It was something that it would be used against wolves or something to either hurt them badly or to kill them. Now a staff, and we all of us have seen the shepherd's staff, the, the tall ones, and they were tall because the staff was something that a shepherd would use not only to um, pull a, a sheep out of a ditch if it was stuck in a ditch with, with the hook, but the tip of it, a shepherd would use, and I've seen this before, the shepherd would use it and just be touching the sheep with it. Uh, uh, and, and letting the sheep know that the shepherd was there. Uh, and, and I think about if they were walking through a, such a dark place that they couldn't see the shepherd any longer, that they could feel the shepherd's staff just touching them and letting them know that the shepherd was there with them and they didn't need to be afraid. I find that very comforting. The Spirit's presence in our own lives when, when in the darkest of times we sense that touch, that incident, something that lets us know that we're not alone, no matter how dark the times are. I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. And the reason I know that is that with your, with your staff, you keep touching me and letting me know that I'm not alone, even when I can't see what's ahead. I think of the scripture where Paul says that nothing in life or death can separate us from God's love. And now the imagery changes once again. And now it goes from David being a sheep and, and God being a shepherd to David being a guest and, and God being a host, getting ready to throw David a large banquet showing to David extravagant hospitality. God does what any ancient host would have done for a special guest. When the guest arrives, their head would be anointed with oil. That was a very common practice. Often their feet would then be washed. But then there is this meal, this extravagant meal that... Um, that is prepared for, for David by God. Uh, even though David's surrounded by his enemies. And then David says something that I never really understood until I was at a Passover meal with some friends. And I don't know if you know much, if you've ever shared a real Passover, uh, but there's a lot of wine <laughs> that's drunk. In fact, you drink a glass of wine with every blessing. And we were coming to this blessing in the meal. And the person next to me reached over and they poured my glass full till it began to drip over the side. And he looked at me and smiled and he said, this is a custom. This is to show you that as a, our special guest here that there's more where that came from. There's plenty more for you. And I couldn't help but think for the first time in my life what it meant when David said, my cup runneth over, my cup runs over. David was 
sharing that God was speaking to him and said, whatever goodness there has been in your life, whatever things that you've been so grateful for, there's plenty more where that came from. God has much more for us when we trust the shepherd and is ready to give it if we would but look to God, trust God. And David ends by saying, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of Yahweh as long as I live. Now, if this isn't comforting, then I don't know what is. Let us pray. God, help us to take a moment this week to simply be quiet and rest in your love, to feel your presence, to be able to say, you make me lie down and let me rest. You're here with me, regardless of all the things and circumstances surrounding me in my life. And I know that regardless, it's okay. All is well and all shall be well. Amen. And let us now end with the common commission. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now would you bow your heads for the benediction. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's hands, may God make his peace to surround you. May God be gracious to you. And may God give you such peace this week, regardless of what you're going through, that you can say that surely this God is my shepherd and can be trusted. Amen.
four inches of Jeff's chair. Good night, everybody. Hey, everyone. You can hear outside uh, Judy's window. Goodbye, everyone. Hey, Ingmar. Bye. 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 Take care, everyone. Have a good week. Yeah, good to see, see you. you. Bye. Here we go. Hi. Hi, bye. bye. Uh, your your sound was okay, right? Zoomers, was the sound okay? It was no, it faded in and out. Yeah. Yeah.